Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, you know, here recently, we've been taking a look at Casa OS uh, quite a bit on our videos here. And uh, the folks behind Casa OS uh, is a company called Ice Whale. And they've also got another line of, uh, that they've spent some time on called Zima Board. Now, Zima Board is actually something uh, that got me introduced to Casa OS. Uh, I originally saw the Zima board uh, on social media somewhere, started following them, and then one day got an email about the update on the Zima board that also included a link to Casa OS. And I've been kind of following them since that point very, very closely. So because we've been spending so much time with Casa OS and whatnot, and I've got to actually talk to uh, the founder and, and his team uh, behind Ice Whale and Casa OS and Zima Board and all of that. Uh, yesterday, I received a package in the mail that I wanted to share with you guys just here for a moment. And it's, it's this uh, right here. Uh, this is uh, from Zima Board or Casa OS or Ice Whale, uh, however you want to put that. But <clears throat> uh, what I found interesting was, well, first off, this is an amazing, this is great presentation. This is how to send a package to someone. Love this. This is great. Uh, but on the back, they have taped uh, engineering sample, not for resale, no commercial value, uh, which I just think is interesting. So uh, I actually uh, am not entirely sure what is in here. Uh, like I said, I knew that I had a package coming. They told me that something was coming, but uh, they didn't tell me what anything in this was. So I thought in this video, we would take a look at what, uh, what they sent me. So uh, let's actually switch camera angles here, uh, just uh, 45 degrees or so. And uh, let's take a look and see what's in the box. Okay, so here is the Zima board box. Uh, like it says here, world's first hackable single board server. So very cool. Uh, this is what they're calling the limited edition there. Uh, let's let's open this thing up. Like so, <clears throat> ooh, very nice packaging. I, I really dig this. It's very, very foamy and soft and cushy. Love that. Uh, we've got uh, a nice little letter from uh, from Lauren, he is uh, the, the founder of uh, Ice Whale, uh, Zima Board, Casa OS. Uh, so from Lauren and team, uh, very cool, love that. That will that will definitely get stored somewhere very open and visible. <clears throat> Here we have the Zima Board. Um, <clears throat> and it doesn't appear to say what's on here. I've never actually opened this. I've seen pictures and renders and that sort of thing on these, but I've never actually opened it up. So. Let's do that. Ooh. <clears throat> Ooh, I love that. Gosh, those colors are amazing. So it's got a built-in uh, heat, or it's got built-in heat fins here. Um, it looks like it's got a couple of SATA ports. Uh, so you can plug in SATA drives, um, a power port, uh, so that you can power said SATA drives. Uh, over on this side, we've got a couple of, I'm guessing one gig ethernet ports, a couple of USB threes, a mini display port. That's, that's an interesting idea uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and then a barrel jack for the power, um, looks like an LED indicator over here. Might not be able to see that, but, um, and then on this side, we have a PCIe uh, 4X slot. I don't know if this is 2.0 or 3.0. Um, we've got a PCIe slot there for that so that we can actually add expansion cards to this for, for any number of things, really. So, <clears throat> so that's what it looks like. I don't know what version this is. It doesn't actually appear to say anywhere on it, but I mean, while we're here, let's go ahead and do the peel. All right. <clears throat> so they've actually got, well, because there's maybe there's, is there another peel? Do I get to peel twice? Holy crap, I get to peel twice. Ah, uh, there we go. Um, so there are, <clears throat> ooh, this is kind of translucent, which I'm sure you can't see. This is a little bit translucent. It's uh, some plexiglass, looks like three layers of plexiglass there for the bottom. God, that looks so, so good. Anyway, let's let's keep moving here. So let's lift off this. Oh, ooh, all right. So we've got a Keoxia. Oh, we got a little sticker there. That, that's fun. Uh, little so we've got a Keoxia 480 gig SATA SSD um, that I can't tell anything else on because it's all written in in, in Chinese, um, and I don't I don't read that. So uh, so we've got we've got this. We've got this 480 gig uh, SATA SSD. This is going to be great for setting up uh, a server with this thing. Absolutely love that. And all right, so yeah, there there is the drive that they sent over. Uh, great branding on that. That just looks really good. Uh, so super stoked about that. So let's set this packaging aside. Uh, so we've got a um, 
a, a branded box here with a 12 volt, three amp uh, power supply. Let's open this up. Oh, good deal. So I said good deal and I'll show you what, why in just a moment. Um, yep, 12 volts, three amps, 36 watts, barrel jack. Um, and I, I kind of dig this. They actually, this is what I was saying good deal about. Uh, they've actually got several different um, types of plugs, so they don't have to have regional plugs. They can just kind of package it all as one and, uh, and be good with that. So again, let's set that stuff aside. So that is that. <clears throat> oh, let's see, it looks like, okay, so here is a, a SATA uh, power and data cable. So this is what will plug into the board. This end will, that end will drive, or plug into uh, to the drive, and that's how we're going to get power and data to our hard drive. Um, um, so we've got, ooh, nice. So we've got uh, actually what appears to be a really nice uh, ethernet cable. Um, I don't know, probably cat, 5e or cat 6 i don't actually see on here where it says but anyway it looks like probably three feet long uh, for that cable uh, we've got a mini display port uh, uh adapter so mini display port hdmi i absolutely love that that's great and then let's see what we've got in here all right so, oh okay so we've got <clears throat> got an expansion board let's get this out of the wrapper here so that, oh, come on, don't, don't, there we go. All right, cool. So this will actually support, holy crap, two M.2 drives via that, that, that P, mini P or that PCI Express interface there. Um, okay, so what's interesting about this is this one is NVMe. Uh, so it should get all of its power and everything, power and data from here. And it looks like this one may be SATA um, because it has a SATA adapter right there. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that that's what it's, what, it's, what it's intended to be. If we come to here, it says like N, NVMe on this one and uh, NGFF on that one. I'll actually have to look that up, I'm not sure. Um, but it supports multiple sizes. I love that there are uh, additional uh, places where I can move these if I need to uh, in order to uh, support smaller drives or shorter, not necessarily smaller, but shorter drives there. Um, let's see, looks like we've got uh, maybe a SATA cable here uh, that is specific to that, yep. So a little, short little SATA cable there, glad to have that in case I decide to go that route. Um, and then, so we've got a, a riser, or not a riser, what am I talking about? We got one of those things to uh, hook this onto um, somewhere there uh, so that we could mount this somewhere. Uh, and then this is a screwdriver with some screws. I'm not gonna open that. I don't want those to get separated. So let's let's make sure I'm not missing anything here. Um, is that another, maybe another sticker? Oh, yeah, and an ice whale sticker. So I've got uh, two stickers here, one for ice whale, uh, one for Zima board, if I can get my thumb out of the way there. So a couple of stickers, love that. And I think that's it, that's that's it. And I don't mean to be dismissive, like that's that's everything that's in there. I am thrilled to, uh, to get this set up. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna sit down, that's what I'm gonna do first. And let's move this up like so. Hey, good enough. So I think what I'm gonna do is take this in the house, um, because I don't have any way to really hook this up out here so that you guys can see what's going on. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is actually take this, hook it up to my tiny pilot uh, so that I can get some some uh, some display and uh, a mouse interaction, keyboard interaction, plug this in, boot it up, and uh, see what happens next. Okay, so here we've got tiny pilot up and running. Uh, we should be on the right connection. So now let's actually power on the Zima board. It's all connected and ready to go. So let's go ahead and power it on and see what happens. All right, so I'm getting some light. I don't have the camera in here, unfortunately, but we're getting <clears throat> some lights flickering over here on the side. Uh, we've got some activity on the uh, network cable here. All right, so we're not... <clears throat> so it may, it may, okay, it looks like it had to do a reboot. Uh, so now I'm wondering if I'm even on the right screen here. Oh, I wonder. There it goes, I didn't have it plugged in far enough. Darn it, all right, well then. So it looks like it starts with Debian 11 with Casa OS, that's interesting. Man, missed all of that boot up stuff because I didn't plug it in or plug in the display port quite far enough. So that, <clears throat> all right, let's click uh, here. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, 
maybe. Let's see. Um, hey, there is Casa OS built on Debian. All right. Um, so I, I honestly, I didn't know what the password was and I just typed in Casa OS and it brought me here. So, uh, so that seems to, to have been correct. All right. I tell you what, let's for the sake of, of you, let's do full screen. So then let's take a look at our display settings here. Um, so it looks like it took us down. Oh, we can do, let's do 30. 30 frames per second should be fine. Maybe. Yeah, all right, keep changes. Cool, so, so this comes as, as we see here. Um, let's, what is this? What is that? Not that. Let's click that and see what we get. Well, I'll be. All right, so so it's got Casa OS based on Debian for the desktop, and it's got Casa OS, uh, the, the Docker management system built into it. So that's cool. Uh, I'm gonna skip over this. We've done this in the past, so I'm not gonna worry about this as much right now. What I do wanna see though, um, <clears throat> all right, here's I think what I'm looking for here. Networking disks, calculator, image viewer disk. System, let's look at system monitor and see what it has to tell us. Resources, four core. Okay, so this is eight gigs um, of memory. Uh, looks like we're using about a gig of swap there. All right, so this is the eight gig model. So that tells me that this should also be uh, the 32 core, or 32 core, <laughs> uh, eight gigs with 32, or eight gigs of RAM with 32 gigs of hard drive space. Um, Yep, so this is the uh, 32 gig version. So eight gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of hard drive space. We've also got that 480 gig uh, Keoxia uh, Xeria uh, SATA SSD, that SSD rather, that 480 gig drive there. So now, now that we've taken a look at this, let's figure out, um, you know what, we can do this. Like we did a moment ago. Uh, let's click on Casa OS here. All right, so we've got our IP address right here. So let's actually close this out. And I'm gonna do 192.168.1.109, like so, and there we go. Um, all right, so now, now we are actually, we're not doing it through this third-party interface of Tiny Pilot. Um, we're actually logged in, or we're going to log into the Casa OS uh, Docker management system uh, remotely. So let's go ahead and do this, and let's see if they've got anything pre-built. Oh, they do have some stuff pre-built, or pre-set pre up in here. Uh, we've got our file browser, uh, we've got Jellyfin, Photoprism, and Qubit Torrent. Uh, let's see what version we're on. Okay, so we're on 023, we're on port 80. Uh, so let's let's run an update on this real quick. So we make sure that we've got the most current uh, version of uh, the Casa West Docker management system uh, available to us here. Well, that's interesting. Now it's not picking up that extra drive. Hmm. Oh, here we go. There it is. Um, so that's the one. So from here, I can probably create storage Storage one, a Keoxia drive, this drive will be emptied. Uh, let's just, yeah, let's just call this storage one, that's fine. So format and create. And uh, hopefully here in just a moment, that will uh, allow us to um, use that drive. Huh. I will have to look into that a little bit more. I may need to reboot because I did the update, we'll see. Okay guys, there you go. There is an unboxing and first impressions of the Zima board 832. Again, that's eight gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of onboard storage. And they were awesome enough to send this over in an amazing box uh, with an extra 480 gigs of hard drive space uh, via this Keoxia SSD. Uh, super, super stoked to, to be able to get my hands on this and share it with you guys. Uh, so what I'd like to know from you is, uh, what should we do with it? Uh, what, what kind of project should we build with 
uh, this Zima board 832. I'd love to uh, get your input from that and maybe build a series on uh, on what we can do with the Zima board 832. So uh, I think with all that said though, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, I just wanted to share this experience with you uh, firsthand. Um, so we've done that. And I think with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up, like I said. So as always, thanks for your time. Also, thanks to Zima board, man, you guys are great. Uh, I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.